This is the plaintiff, Delrina Robinson. She says she and the defendant have been in an on and off relationship for years, and she finally came to her senses and ended things for good. The defendant was a lazy bum who never worked, sat around playing video games all day while she worked four jobs. Enough was enough. He owes her money for everything she paid for and is suing for $2,498, the amount she's owed. This is the defendant, Mustafa Jackson. He says the plaintiff has plumb lost her mind because the things she's suing for are things that were purchased for their apartment. Her place burned down. She had nowhere to go, so he let her stay with him, rent-free. How she thinks she can now turn around and sue him for it here is downright laughable. He's accused of bad boyfriending. All parties, please raise your right hand. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. All right, Delrina Robinson, you are suing Mustafa Jackson for $2,498 in items that your ex-boyfriend has kept that you claim are yours. Tell me what's going on. Um, what happened was on top, October um, 2nd, me and him got into a heated argument and then over my car, he wanted to hold. I told him- he wanted no. what? He wanted to hold my vehicle. Well, by hold it, what do you mean, borrow it? Yes. Okay. And I had to go to work, and when I How told- How long him, had you two been dating? Two and a half years. Uh, were you living together? Yeah. Okay. And so you moved in with him, and you needed to go to work, and he wanted to take your car? Yes, he claimed that he had some errands to do, but I told him no, because he had the day before to do all that, but he chose to stay in the house and sit around and just play um, his Madden 2013. His Madden 2000, wait, his video games? Yes. Okay, um, is he working? Yes, he's just working on about two, three days, but he claimed he be so um, tired from working two, three days that he can't do nothing else. <laughs> Were you working? Yes, I work, um, at the time I was working four jobs then. Four jobs? Yeah. How is there enough time in the day for four jobs? Yeah. Wow. Um, I have a full-time job, nine to five, and I bartend two, I used to bartend Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Okay. Um, four different places. Four different places. Yes. Okay. Uh, so was there a little bit of resentment over that with you and him? Yes, because I felt as though that I, I shouldn't have let him hold my car because I worked so hard. But at the same time, I told him if I could sit up there and work so hard to get my car and go back and forth to work and everything, then he could do the same thing. He's just not self-motivated like me. Okay. I so could, you guys break up and what happens? Um, he told me to get out. I'm not going to be Because the apartment was in his name? Yes. So you leave, at, but your stuff is still there. It still is. So he told me, first he told me to make sure I um, remove everything. And he thought I wasn't going to be able to do that. So I quickly made a phone call, called my job and everything. And within like two hours, I went to go get me a um, U-Haul truck. And, and I got a phone call from my sister telling me that he done told the um, officers that none of the stuff was um, in apartment mines. And the only thing he brought out was my clothes. Brought out your clothes. And then according to you, the following items are yours, meaning you brought them into this apartment? Yes. So it's a desktop computer, a 19 inch TV, a yes. 37 inch TV, a three mm -hmm. piece bar set, mm -hmm. a reclining love seat, a reclining sofa, a water cooler, month supply of water. Yes. And a cat. <laughs> so what's, what's up with the cat? Tell me about that. Um, the name of the cat is Simba. It wasn't originally mine at the beginning. It was my sister's um, daughter's So the name boyfriend. of the cat is Simba. Yes. And your name is Mustafa? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For those of you who have children out there and have seen The Lion King. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so you're there and you're with the police and you have a U-Haul and they told you you need to go to court and settle this. Yes, and, and I was showing them all my receipts. They said, that's good. What receipts? The receipts to my belongings that was in his apartment. Right. All right. And so do you have the receipts with you here today now? Yes. Hand them over to me. And did you ever talk to him again after that? Yes. I um, tried on um, numerous occasions after he called me to try to like avoid coming to court. Who, who called you? He did. He called you to try to avoid coming to court? Yeah. And said what to you? Um, he said that he, um, we both wasn't expecting to go this far and stuff like that. It got out of, re out of hand and stuff like that. So then I was like, I just want my stuff because I'm tired of the arguing and stuff and bickering and everything. The relationship is not growing. Two and a half years of nothing. Right. And I told him I just want my stuff. And what did he say? 
he told me, no, I shouldn't have called the police. I, that you shouldn't have called the police. So to punish you for calling the police, he was going to keep your stuff. All right. Are those tears? Mm-hmm. Why? Because I'm tired of going through. I didn't want to come here and do this. <laughs> Why All do you think I do is just treat him right. He just treat me so bad. What's going on? <sighs> These litigants were together for two and a half years, and it was a mess. She says he was a slacker who never got better and sponged off her. The plaintiff just broke down. Let's listen. A little different side of the story. Um, the arena's house, had, we were staying together. She, we, she was staying together for a while. She had moved in before. Some things just wasn't working out, and um, she decided to leave. When she left, we started talking again and uh, trying to build our relationship back up. Uh, we both the same age, and we felt as though we wasn't getting any younger. Um, the arena, How old are you guys? I'm 30. Okay. Um, the arena really is my first love, like the first woman I really fell in love with in my whole 30 years. Um, but the arena apartment, even I mean, even though we got our own issues, the arena apartment had burnt down. I ran to an aide. That's how she got back in the place with me now. Okay. She called me and told me I rushed over there. The apartment was, the, the building was te off terrible. Did you, were you, uh, did you actually get there while it was on fire? Or like I the think next it was day? just coming out. It was like just coming out. The smoke was still on there. The wow. fire department was still there. Okay. Um, luckily, by the graces of God, none of her stuff was damaged. None of the things that were there. Then I asked Delreen, I said, listen, if you, if you want to and you feel as though it's the best thing you could do, you can come stay with me, but make sure that's what you want to do. <laughs> so... We agreed that she'd come stay with me. So when she came and stayed with me, I said, listen, what you want to do with the things that you got here? Because I have my own stuff. She said, I need a place to put it. I do all my stuff out. Couch, uh, TV, and all the furniture I had out for the place to put her Where stuff. Did you, what did you do with it? I threw it out. To put her, cause she could bring you didn't stuff. sell it because it was I nice. You threw it out because it was garbage? It wasn't garbage, but it was, I mean... Okay, so I, is that why you're keeping the, her time. stuff? Because yes, you don't have stuff now? No. If she takes it? Because you threw it out because she was moving in? Absolutely. And as far as the cat goes, but, she don't take care of the cat. I take care of the cat. We got two cats. I, I bought a, I, for well, first I bought a puppy. I bought a puppy. We couldn't keep the puppy. So then I bought a, a cat. I bought a cat, cat named Mittens. So when she leave, instead of keeping me, she brought her own cat. Now I'm the only person to take care of this cat. If the cat box don't get cleaned by me, it won't get cleaned. Wait, you're talking about the first time you guys lived together. No, this is now. When she brought the cat, she came in. Oh, with you a bought her mittens, and then one day she shows up with another Simba. cat. Yeah, she okay. brought with another cat. Now the cats, they to me, the cats are companions. They run around with each other. Oh, the two cats? The two cats are companions. I don't so want you don't want to separate them. the siblings? Is that what you're trying I, to say? That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Okay. And I'm the one but you're not contesting that Simba's her cat. I'm not contesting that that's her cat. You just don't think it's in the best interest of the cat. I don't think it's in the... I truly don't believe it's in the best interest of the you cat. You understand that cats are property and that they're not children. I understand. I'm the one I know they're your children, but they're not really children. <laughs> I take care of them. I'm sure you do. When you don't feed them, she don't change the cat with it, nothing. I'm the one who do all that. <laughs> I take care of the cats. Now the furniture, as far as the furniture go, the fry had to throw all my stuff out. So I asked her, um, Did she, she went, make you throw the stuff out? Did you throw it out because your no. stuff was nicer? You know, when people live together, they make decisions, okay? They're not gonna have two couches in the living room. They're not gonna have two coffee tables in the living room. You sort of look around, you say, yeah, let's keep that one. And then let's sell this one because it's valuable. Or let's put it out in the front and hope the city takes it because it's garbage. <laughs> You know, those are the decisions people make when they're living together. What does that mean? Does that mean that that magically is no longer her couch? I don't know that it does. Um, you know, and it's not even like you're, you're saying, all right, I'll give you half the money for this stuff because half of it became mine when you moved in. You're saying none of it's yours now. Tough. How's that fair? I was going, that was my, well, I was trying to Are you to trying to get her back? That's what's going on. That's why you won't give her the furniture. I mean, we're going through rough times right now. Do I love her? Absolutely, I do love her. But uh, we just going through rough times. We gotta. I had to sit down and make some decisions upon my life too. I mean, like she said, we're not getting any younger. I'm. I'm not gonna sit here and lie and say I don't love her because I do. 
I mean, there's just no snap off and all like that. It just don't happen like that. And welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. If you're in a relationship and it's just not good, how long do you stick with it before you just say, hey, it's over? What do you think? I think about a year. I think that's enough time. Um, and obviously, if that person's not responding the way you need to see them respond to you, then it's time to move on. One year. What do you think? It depends how the relationship was going from the beginning. If it's been all it's bad, just not very good. It's, not it's just not very good. Not developed. Why would you stay in a relationship that's not very good? Well, but at what point do you cut bait? When? You, but if you kind of like the person, but the, the the chemistry isn't working out. If you're smart right away. You don't wait. Two days and you're out. Got your point. What do you think? Um, six months. You have. You need time to get over the emotions. You can't make an emotional erratic decision. So, I think six months. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Going inside the courtroom. See, I gotta tell you, if I love somebody, I'm not gonna you know, leave them without furniture or their cat. I'm just gonna give all that stuff to them and then make decisions about my life and move <coughs> on. And then maybe one day that you can be together again, but I I wouldn't leave them with no furniture and look at the cops and say, she don't live here, boom, close the door. I mean, that doesn't sound like love, does it? Um, and that's maybe kind of her complaint. A lot of stuff was new too. Yes. And just before you moved in with them. And as you can really see, some of the pictures, I don't know, um, that some of the stuff I brought was still wrapped up from my apartment that I never got a chance to use. Wait, life. when did you take these pictures? Um, when he had left out. When he had what? The day that um, I was moving out. What is this a picture of? It's disgusting. Why are uh, you showing me this picture? This of just like to show part of the fact that what I'm living with and he expect me to sit up here and clean up at them. He pisses in a bathroom sink. I, I'm going to throw up, honestly. <laughs> yeah, that's what cigarettes. she took a picture of and handed to me. Yes, that's just a show that he telling me that I'm coming home all day from work and I'm supposed to clean up stuff like that. Those are cigarettes that I'm paying half of the rent and he's smoking around in an apartment knowing it's bad for my health. She knew I smoked before I moved. She, she moved in. What? She knew I, knew I smoked that. before she moved I in. I knew that, but she if don't I was clean, in a I clean. She don't clean. She don't Nobody do cleans. Mm. I clean. <laughs> I clean when I'm there. I work night shift. She worked the day shift. She I'm work, going all day. She, she working clean. four jobs? She don't work four jobs. What, she working she four, work different four, different four different places now? No, she doesn't. She works a full-time job during the daytime, and she bartends at night. All right. Okay, I work four to 12. I work 40. Oh, I work my three days a week, and sometimes I work a double. And something, most, so that's like four, I work four days a week. And the thing I'm going to ask for a car is to go look for an interview. That's why I asked for a car. She wouldn't let me use her car to go. I mean, we're supposed to be together and I asked you to use your car to go look for an interview. She don't help me out of anything. We're supposed to be together. How are we going to help each other and grow? We can't. Like, I, I mean, you're my woman. I'm supposed to be a man, but I can't use your car to go look for a job or anything of that nature. And now she knew I smoked. And for the cigarette, she knew I smoked before she lived there. I don't want to clean up. That. I clean up that all the time. She don't clean. I wash clothes. I wash so many panties. They probably think they mind when I'm in them. Uh, <laughs> they probably think they mind. I'm at the laundry man. I wash so many panties. Girls probably think they mind. I wash them. She money don't to wash clothes. clothes. I wash. She don't wash her clothes. Her mother. Okay. That's who wash her clothes. I give her the money to wash the clothes. Right. You guys aren't good for each other. Move on. You're young. You have your whole lives ahead of you. Move on. Find somebody who's better suited to you. But I didn't expect me to let him hold a car. When I had, when I first got in a relationship with him, I had a car. I was working two jobs, then two. All he used to do was drop me off at work and then drive my car. Now, then when I come home, car. Five, work more hours, five, get your own car. Home, it's, fine. it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I, I don't need to hear the justifications for this. You know, you feel like your car is your own and he needs to work more hours and buy his own car. You feel like she's selfish because she doesn't hand her car keys over to you every day for you to do what you need to do. You guys need to find different people. And that's it. You're only 30. I know it feels old. I felt old at 32. Particularly because at 30, when you're Cuban and you're not married, you are a spinster. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right? Um, but, you know, it's fine. You know, you'll both meet somebody else. So what I'm going to do, because I really do not want to have you guys have contact with each other again, is I'm going to come up with a figure that I think is appropriate. And I, do, I am going to take into account how young, how uh, new some of these things are and that some of them were wrapped up. And therefore, I am going to order that the defendant pay you the amount of $1,700 for the furniture. The cat is a thornier problem. I hear what you're saying. You're basically saying it's her cat. I know it's her cat, but I think I'm better equipped to take care of it. Um, if it's not your cat, you don't have the right to say that. You can't. It's called theft.
Simba is her cat, therefore property. And in the eyes of the law, if it's her property, you have to give it back to her. $1,700 verdict for the plaintiff plus a direct order to return Simba. That's my verdict. Good luck, folks. Let's find out how the defendant feels about the outcome of this case here. Step in right next to me here. What's, what's, your, what's your feeling on this verdict? What you got out of it? I don't think it's pretty much fair, especially the fact that uh, I'm the one to take care of the animal. She ain't even... We understand the ruling there that the cats are property and she gets it. I understand. I right. mean, the law is the law, but, you know, I think I'm just a better fit. You're over her? Not yet. I'll be over her, though. That could take time. I'm not going to say and lie like it's just going to be right now and it's over. You think I... you're good for her? No. All right. All right. Right around the corner this way, okay? All right. Come on in. There were some tears earlier in the case from you. Uh, what are you thinking right now? I'm just happy that everything is over. But Why is it so hard for you to see him in here and go through this? Because he sits up there and knowing that how he treated me. And w when he s stood right on the other side of the courtroom and said, I still love her. Yeah, but if you love somebody, you don't treat them the way you treat them. Try to keep your stuff and including my cat. You know, I worked hard for all my stuff. Do you have any feelings for him? Yeah, I still love him, but... I've been doing good for these past couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. I've been smiling more and everything else, so. All right, can you go your own way and, you know? Yes, I could. All right, good luck with everything, All right. okay? All right, over to Harvey. I know this is uncomfortable, but if you are in a relationship where you move in with somebody and there are big ticket items like television sets or whatnot, and you know that you know the relationship could go either way, you have got to sit down and have an honest discussion saying, if things don't work out, who gets what? It is uncomfortable to do. You will avoid a lot of problems if you if you don't do if you do that. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.